Before the break, we talked about honoring those who go to war fighting for this country. But another war is actually being waged right here on our home turf. We are fighting to find missing people of color. Thousands are reported missing every year in the U.S., but the majority of these cases don't get widespread mainstream media attention. In fact, most often, when a case finds itself in the headlines, the victims are actually white. When you consider the stats of how many black people go missing, it's even more troubling. According to the Black and Missing Foundation, black people only make up about 13% of the population but people of color account for nearly 40% of missing persons. And yet it seems that no one actually looks for us. And that became all too clear this summer when 22-year-old Gabby Petito's disappearance was at the top of every broadcast on every major network in the country. Her case sparked a national search and Petito's remains were later discovered in Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park. But missing persons advocates shot back calling the media out for the lack of care and attention given to black and brown people who also go missing, saying that the absence can best be understood as part of a larger societal attitude toward black girls and women in which the American body politic keeps us on the margins of society. A new docu-series hopes to shine light on this issue and bring awareness surrounding the thousands of women and children of color who have disappeared. It's called Black and Missing, and it follows Derricka and Natalie Wilson, founders of the Black and Missing Foundation, as they examine the role that systemic racism plays in specific cases. You can watch Black and Missing when it premieres on HBO on November 23rd, and I am so happy to have Derricka Wilson here with us. She is the co-founder and CEO co of the Black and Missing Foundation. Derricka, thank you so much for joining me here on Amplified tonight, and please tell us a little bit more about the series itself. Thank you so much for having us. Um, we're so excited to be able to shine a spotlight on our cases. Um, this has been a long time coming. My sister-in-law and I, we've been sounding the alarm for nearly 14 years to bring equality when it comes to missing persons of color. Because we do know the names, Natalie Holloway, Lacey Peterson, Chandra Levy, Gabby Petito, the, the list goes on and on. And, and this documentary allows for society to see the uphill battles that people of color go through just to get law enforcement to take the cases, just to get the media to, to flash these missing individuals on their news station. You know, we really want to just change this entire narrative. So we're very excited to be able to bring this to the forefront at a, on a global level, but also provide hope to these families because we have seen miracles happen, you know, time and time again. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now, one of the cases that's gotten a little bit of national attention since Gabby Petito is the search for Ariana Fitz. She went missing as a toddler and has been missing for about five years now. So give us some more context about this case and why it's thankfully becoming a story that's finally in the public eye. You know, Ariana Fitz's case is so near and dear to our hearts. Um, you know, her family believes that she is out there, she's still alive. We believe that she's still out there. And I think it's equally important for people to know about Ariana Fitz because you can't ask people in the community to come forward and if they see something and say something, if they have no knowledge that this child is missing. You know, why is her case any different from, you know, Kaylee Anthony's case? You know, less is more. So for us to be able to spotlight this case, we're hoping that answers come forward and so we can find mm. this little baby mm. and, um, and reunite her with her family. Sadly, her mom was murdered, but we do believe that she is alive and we know that someone out there knows something. We need them to say something. So uh, again, bringing mm. it to the national mm. platform is we're hopeful.
I, I want to just kind of back up for a moment because I think we're seeing an increase in focus on cases involving people of color, and, I, and I'm going to ask you why that is. I know that the work of your organization is a big part of why, uh, but could, talk to us about you know how the needle is starting to, to trend and move, uh, given you know all the conversations that we've been having about about white people who are gone missing, and now we're seeing that change a bit. Why are we seeing a change? What's the pressure that's been put, uh, and where do we go from here? You know, again, we first and foremost thank national black media. You guys have been fantastic with partnering with us to help us get our stories out there. You know, we have been calling out mainstream media to have those uncomfortable conversations in the boardroom because the decision makers typically don't look like us. We've been calling out law enforcement. And, and when you call out the media and, and they spotlight these cases, it actually applies pressure to law enforcement to devote more resources. So I really think that the narrative is starting to change a lot more. You know, our community is not going to continue to sit back and be quiet about this issue. This is a pandemic that's happening in our community, and we can't afford to continue to be quiet. We have to speak up. We have to reunite our families and bring them home. Mm, I'm, so hey, I'm so thankful for you thanks. for speaking these names, right? We always say, like, speak her name, speak his name, speak their name. Like, we should know these people's names in the way that they're, that, like you say, you just rattled off a list of, of white girls who are household names. Another case that you have started following is the search for 25-year-old LaDexter Pelt. Tell us more about that case. LaDexter Pelt, he went missing. Um, he was traveling to California. He just celebrated his 25th birthday on November the 1st. And he traveled to California with his friend, um, John. And once they landed, a friend, an unknown friend, picked him up, and they're all missing now. I've been on the phone with his mom. Um, she's a council member in Alabama. She's boots on the ground right now in California, desperately looking for her son. Um, the friend, John, who was with him, his phone was uh, found in the woods. And, you know, we, we want to continue to remain hopeful, but we really think that this case should be elevated to mainstream media. We have three missing individuals in this particular case, and no one knows anything. Mm. They were last seen on November the 4th, 2021. You know, he is a father uh, of a of a young daughter he just had in July. His family is desperate. John's family is desperate. And again, we're talking about another individual who hasn't even been identified, but we know that he's missing because law enforcement confirmed that. Um, so again, uh, LaDexter, he has been missing since November the 4th, um, traveling from Alabama to California. Wow. I'm thinking about race here, of course, because we're talking about a black person. I'm also thinking about gender here because I'm, I'm assuming, and I'm making gender assumptions right now, but I'm assuming that he identifies as male or is recognized as male. Uh, and it's not lost on me that sometimes, for sure, black people, but most of the time men, aren't as catchy and exciting and sexy to the mainstream media to be able to, to, to follow and track his story. So I wonder, what do we actually need to do to level the playing field when these investigations, you know, are happening or being reported? Like, how do we investigate this, these cases involving people of color? Is this a policy thing? Is it a policing thing? Is it a, a public outcry thing? It, it really is. It's all. It's a combination of all. Um, we need to change how these cases are classified. Typically, when people of color go missing, uh, black and brown, male or female, their cases are oftentimes associated with some sort of criminal activity, and it really doesn't send a sense of urgency. And when it comes to missing children in the black and brown community, their cases are oftentimes labeled as runaways, and they're not receiving the Amber Alert, and there's not enough uh, resources dedicated to those cases. So we really need to look at how we're classifying these cases. Every case should be taken seriously. Um, I think in this particular case, we need to involve our federal uh, law enforcement partners to, to be an additional resource in trying to assist on the local level because missing persons is not considered a crime. And so adults can come and go as they please. But when it comes to, you know, cases of this nature, you really need that additional resource um, to be able to have another set of eyes on this and the, the tools needed to be able to find these individuals. 
30 seconds left. What would you tell to law enforcement that just brush off these cases of missing children as uh, runaways? I, I would tell law enforcement, because I am a former police officer, we really need to look at best practices. How can we best serve our community? We are all members of this community and every life matters. So all cases need to be taken seriously. All right. Derricka Wilson, co-founder and CEO of the Black and Missing Foundation. Thank you so much for coming on Amplified. We appreciate you and all the work that you do. Now, you can watch the four-part documentary series Black and Missing on HBO on November 23rd and when it streams on HBO Max the following day. And each week, our colleagues at Making the Case tell the stories of missing black girls and women all across the country. Make sure to tune in to Making the Case with Yodite Walde at 9 p.m. Eastern. That is every night you can catch them, every Thursday night, excuse me, the Black and Missing uh, segment right here on BNC.